I'm Katie, the designer behind KT in the Squid, and welcome to the Looting House Crochet Along. So this is what I'm calling week zero. This week you're going to have time to choose the size sweater that you're going to make, and then once you know what size sweater you're making, you can um, go and gather all of your supplies and order yarn if you need to. And then next week we're going to jump into the crochet along and start with our gauge swap. So this here behind me is the Looting House Cardi. Hopefully you have seen the pictures of of it and you're as excited as I am to get this crochet along started. So before I get into everything today, I kind of want to do a little bit of housekeeping and go over how you can be a part of the crochet along. So first, the easiest way to follow along is to go on to my blog. There you're going to find everything for free. You can find all the instructions. I'm going to post all the videos and everything is going to be right there. Now if you're like me and maybe you like to print off a pattern, you can go to Ravelry. I will put a link and you can purchase the pattern for $1.50. Keep in mind when you purchase the pattern and the crochet along is still going on, it's not going to be a full pattern until the very end because it is a crochet along. I will go in each week and I will update the pattern to have instructions corresponding with that week. So it's not gonna be complete until the very end. Also keep in mind, you don't have to purchase the pattern. So if you're unsure, go to the blog, follow along on there, and if you want something to print off, go and purchase the pattern. Next, if you're not already in my Facebook group, be sure to hop in there. Um, there's already been a lot of excitement and a lot of buzz about the crochet along in there. Also, if you're not quite sure if you want to join in on the crochet along, but you still enjoy crocheting or knitting or anything yarn related, you can go ahead and hop in there and join in the fun in there because it's not just for the crochet along anymore. Also, don't miss out on the amazing giveaway that I have going on to kick things off. The wonderful people at Universal have provided enough yarn for one lucky person to make their sweater and they also get to choose the um, color that they get. Also, Furls Crochet has um, offered up a hook, this hook, you'll get this hook, and so you will have your yarn and your hook to make your sweater. So a huge thanks to Universal Yarns, they also provided the yarn for my samples, and Furls Crochet for providing that for us. So speaking of yarn, let's go ahead and talk about the yarn. Hopefully you saw we're using Universal's Uptown DK. And I first used this yarn not too long ago and I thought that'll be great for the crochet along. Um, it, it's an acrylic, so it's perfect for a beginner. You don't have to worry about the care of wool or anything. And um, it's anti-pilling, which I really enjoy. And it has this beautiful softness to it. It's not like that scratchy acrylic that you usually use for afghans. So if you wanna learn more about this yarn, I have a detailed yarn review on my blog that you can go and read all about it if you're not sure if you wanna try it out, um, which I highly recommend you do. And I actually tested the anti-pilling and it is anti-pilling. It did really well. Keep in mind that this is the DK weight. They also have a worsted and a bulky. And I think I also saw that they had a sport weight. So make sure that you get the DK weight. So I also want to mention that um, the color of this yarn. So this is um, the gray, which is what the size small is that you see in the photographs. And that's called Donahue. And then the other cardigan that's kind of the reddish color, that's the size medium, uh, that is called beet, and that's right here. So if you're looking for those specific colors, the red is the beet, and the gray is called Donahue. Now to purchase this yarn, if you are in North America, you're gonna have a pretty easy time finding it. Uh, they have distributors in Mexico, Canada, and US. If you go to a local yarn shop, if they don't have it in the shop, they'll be, they should be able to order it for you and you should have it pretty quick. Also, you can get it online uh, really easy. You can either go directly to their website uh, you can order from them directly, or if you go to my blog posts, you will find a few different links of places where I found that you could purchase online as well. Now, if you live outside of North America, you're going to have a harder time finding this exact yarn. 
So if you absolutely have to make a substitute, uh, look for a DK weight yarn. Uh, you can look for something that is acrylic, but make sure it's a high quality acrylic. Uptown is a high quality acrylic and it, it's anti-pilling. So if you can find something that is anti-pilling, that's going to be even better. Now, if you're on the fence about yarns, go ahead and buy one or two skeins of what you're thinking about. You can go ahead and work up a gauge swatch and you can wash it and see how it actually wears and um, that'll give you an idea of how it's going to hold up as an actual garment. So if you're on the fence, if you've never used that yarn before, I highly re recommend doing that. Also, um, if you're on the fence about certain yarns, jump into the Facebook group and you can ask about specific yarns. Chances are there's somebody in there that has used it and can tell you a little bit more about it. And like I said, I'm using a Furls crochet hook. Now this is their Odyssey. I love this hook. It's ergonomic, it's great on your hands. It's also, it glides through the yarn super easy. If you wanna read my review on this hook, you can go to my blog and check that out. I highly recommend these um, hooks. They're handmade, they're great, they're great quality. So this is a G and that's a four millimeter. To get ready for next week, I suggest having a few different sizes handy because you might have to go up or down a hook size depending on your gauge. And I will talk a little bit more about that next week. So to find the full list of supplies that you'll need for the crochet along, go to my blog. I'm not gonna bore you and go over scissors and everything right now. Next, I'd kinda like, I, I'd like to go over kind of like a game plan for this crochet along so you know what to expect. So like I said, this is the card cardigan and um, next week we're going to do our gauge swatch which is going to look like this you're just going to do a little square and I made the first week pretty short and sweet just in case you need a little extra time to get your yarn or if you're on the fence of what yarns you want to use you'll have time to test it out and see what you like week two we're going to work the body of the cardigan now if you kind of look at the um, the photos and the sweater right here the body is not quite as big as you might think it is. This is our trim. Hopefully you can see that. Our trim is right here and it starts right here. So this is the body going this way and going this way is the trim. So the body is actually smaller than you probably might, probably might think it is because the trim is so wide and the, the trim goes all the way across the, um, down the bottom and up the other side and across the back. So. The body, don't be too scared um, for week two, it's probably not as quite as big as you think it might be. So for the body, we'll start down here and as you can see, there's all this extra trim on the bottom. So it starts right here. So we'll start at the bottom and it's gonna be all one piece for the body. And then when we get to the um, underarms, we will split and we'll work the front, which is over here and then the back which is right here and then the other front which is right here and then we'll do a little seam on the shoulders and if you look at the back you can see there's this kind of mesh pattern going up the back here i wanted to add just a little something extra to the back but not like over the top crazy to still make it really easy um but also something that makes you kind of look at it and think, oh, that's, that's interesting. And it also kind of elongates your body from behind, which is always good. Week three, we're going to work the trim, which like I said, um, this is the trim and it goes across the bottom and up the other side and around the neck. So that's all one piece that's gonna be crocheted on. No seaming there. Week four, we're going to do the sleeves so you'll make two sleeves obviously and those are going to be worked from the the bottom up these sleeves this year i did a set in sleeve this seam is going to be a little bit more challenging than last year but i really love a set in sleeve i love the way it fits and i think overall it's just a great fit for uh, any body type it'll it'll it, I think it fits really good on lots of body types. So then that brings us into week five. We'll block the whole thing, which by the way is gonna be super duper easy. And then we'll, we'll do the seam 
for the sleeve. We'll seam that in. And I actually, I did a video of me seaming in the, the sleeve. So hopefully that'll guide you and make it a little easier on you. So next I'd like to go over how to choose the right size for you. Cause I know this can be a little bit intimidating if you've never um, made a garment and you might be worried that you're gonna choose the wrong size. Cause that can, that's the first decision you're gonna have to make in this crochet along. So this week I have provided you everything you need to choose your size. And then of course, once you know your size, you can go get the amount of yarn that you're gonna need. If you look at your pattern, and um, the first set of numbers that I've given you is your bust measurement. So this is gonna be your actual bust measurement. And then the next one is the finished bust width of the sweater. So it's gonna be from here all the way around to here. So if you took this sweater and you, you laid it out flat, it would be it flat. It's, it's the measurement that you'll see um, you look at the the schematic it's the sweater is basically laid out flat so it's that whole measurement across and then there's a little note that says that the cardigan is designed to fit snug with about a three inch overlap in the front that's like a a quick tip for you for choosing your size ideally if you have an ideal bust size according to the pattern which most of you probably don't your cardigan will fit nice and slug snug and have this nice three inch overlap on the front. Now, not everybody's gonna have that because n no, not every bust size is gonna fit perfectly into all those um, measurements. What you need to do is kind of make your best guess to pick the, the best size for your bust size. First, you can go ahead and measure your bust. And to do that, you can put on um, whatever shirt you think you might wear underneath your cardigan and just your everyday bra. That way you have a nice accurate measurement. And um, it's really helpful to have somebody measure you. That way you can put both arms down and relax and that's gonna give you a more accurate measurement. But of course, if you need to measure yourself, it'll be okay too. Some people get a little confused about the bust and your, your chest measurement. So you wanna make sure that you're measuring across the fullest part of your bust. So I'm gonna show you here. So now the fullest part of your bust is gonna be at your um, nipple line. Once you have the tape measure around you, or if you have somebody helping you, once they have the tape measure around you, put both arms down and kind of take a breath and relax. And that's gonna give you the most accurate measurement. Now, if you're measuring yourself, try and relax as much as you can because you are gonna have one hand up holding the tape measure up. Now, I know that my dress um, form is a 33 inch bust and me personally, I'm a 32 inch. So if I look at my measurements, I know that for me, 32 is pretty much perfect for a size small. So I pick size small. For my dress form, it's a little trickier because she's not quite perfect at the size small, but 33 inches is closer to the small than it is the medium. So at 33 inches, I would go small. Now it worked out pretty interesting because both of my models for the samples that you see um, wearing the sweater, they are actually both size 34 inch. Now, one is wearing the size small, so the gray is the size small, and one is wearing a size medium. The, the red, the beet color, that's a size medium. So the reason that I, I chose to go that way, if you look at the size medium model, the one that's wearing the size medium, you might notice she's a little curvier on the bottom, and I thought that that fit her body a little bit better. And really, the, um, the one that's wearing the gray, she probably could have gone small or medium. Um, I just chose to put the small on her because I put the medium on the other model. But it, the small was probably a little snugger up in the shoulders, which I kind of like how that fits, so it doesn't feel like the sweater's falling off of you. But it was a, a snugger fit, and if you don't like that, then you can go up a size. And also, she's kind of longer and um, not quite as curvy on the bottom, so I thought that that size small, it fit her really well. Plus, with this sweater, I, I don't 
really like it closed anyways so it just being open on her I thought it looked really nice so if you are still on the fence about what size to choose look at the next note and it's gonna tell you um, or the next set of measurements is telling you what the finished bust width of the actual sweater is and then the next um, note is telling you that the cardigan should fit snug with about a three inch overlap what you can do is you can kind of play around with those measurements you can take the actual measurement of the bust and find it on your tape measure and then wrap it around you and see how it's going to fit how much of an overlap you're going to have in the front and then even take it down to your hips and see if you're going to like how it fits around the hips next if you're still unsure take a look at your schematic the next measurement that you should probably compare is going to be your shoulder to shoulder measurement and um, quite honestly it is a little if you measure your actual body you might not quite know what to do with that measurement you might not know what it means so what I like to do and I think this is the most effective and easiest way is I find a shirt that has a set in sleeve so um, the shirt that I'm wearing right now has a set in sleeve or you can find a cardigan that you like that you like the way it fits on your shoulders and um, lay it down flat on a surface and measure it from um, the shoulder seam to shoulder seam and see how those measurements compare to the measurements on my schematic and that's going to give you a good idea of how it's actually going to fit when it's done if you're still a little lost on your size uh, i suggest going into the facebook group i'm going to make a post in the facebook group i don't know what i'll title it but i'll it'll be titled something like sizing help or something and you can go into that post and comment comment on the post with your questions about sizing that way it doesn't get um, lost in the wall of the group because there are some other things going on in there so go and post to that if you still have more questions and we'll be sure to answer, answer them as best as we can so once you feel confident and you know what size you're gonna make go ahead and get your yarn and then we will get started next week on our gauge swatch um, and don't forget to enter that giveaway on my blog um, I'm so excited to have you guys all here and I will see you next week bye